Hello and welcome once again to the Trailer Fitters Toolbox. Uh, if this is the first time you've joined us, we do tutorials on Land Rover repairs, especially the 200 and 300 TDI engines. Okay, so this is the second part of the two-part series about the cylinder head gasket, how to replace it. In part one, we had a look at the bolts, how to remove them and the sequence involved. We also looked at two different types of cylinder head gaskets. I also uh, give an indication about the uh, thickness of gasket that you need to know about. And I've got the opportunity to show off my engine stand. Now in this, we're going to have a look at fitting the head and clamping it down using the correct tools and the sequence applied by the workshop manual. Okay, before we start fitting the head gasket with the cylinder head, ensure your pistons are halfway down the bores. Okay, so the head has just been put in position. I'm holding it. It's located on the dowels and I'm just going to put the bolts in gently for now. Then I'm going to explain what tools you use. Okay, the modern way to tighten bolts up is with an angle gauge seen here in the workshop manual. And here in real life is the tool. It's got markers to 360, 360 degrees. All right, so usually you set it at zero and then bring your bar around to the angle that we need which in this case is 60 degrees okay so you see here I'm actually bringing it up to zero and not back to zero I'm bringing it up to zero every time and then with the bar the sockets fitted on the bolt I can then pull it round I'm also holding the top of the bar okay it's the easiest way and then off to 60 and that is 60 degrees. We'll also need a torque wrench, which will do 40 newton meters. Okay. This one is a laser tools one, which I bought for about 35 pounds, and it is accurate. Fitting the bolts, the one thing I would advise you to do, and it also says in the manual, excuse me for quoting it all the time, but they're the guys that design this engine, do not drop the bolts into the bolt holes, okay? The reason for that is it can damage the thread and then it picks up as you screw it in. Uh, it can cause a lot of damage that way. So what I'm doing is just loosely tightening them up till I've got all of them in and just slightly nipped them with, uh, with the socket with no pressure on, okay? That's the first thing to do before we go into sequences. So once you've got your bolts fitted just loosely, there are four tightening sequences to um, tightening down the cylinder head. Torque all bolts in sequence to 40 newton meters. Second one is turn all bolts in sequence to 60 degrees. Turn all bolts in sequence another 60 degrees and not 120 on each. Turn selected bolts a further 20 degrees. Don't get tempted to tighten sequences 1 and 2 to 120 degrees, that doesn't work. They have to be done in sequence so it clamps down evenly. The extra 20 degrees is on the centre bolts and I will show you that. So referring back to the workshop manual, we have the tightening sequence. We start from the centre and then we start to work outwards in sequence. Now this is different to the undoing sequence where we work from the outside inwards. Looking at the graph here, okay, I'm sorry it's a bit blurred. Well, this is a screen grab from the actual workshop manual. Start with one, go to two, from two, we'll then go to three, from three, we'll then go to four, from four, we go to five, five, we go to six, six, we go to seven, and so on and so on, until you've done all 18. That will be one sequence. So, with a torque wrench, this one's a micrometer type torque wrench, which is sometimes awkward to do because the uh, scales are different on this. However, this is a laser one and it's very accurate. It's been calibrated when I was at work and um, the guy said it has always been in, so it's not a problem. What we're doing is we're looking for 40 newton meters and then we'll wind it up until we get zero on the center marker there. Okay, I'll do a tutorial on this. Important that you lock the handle all right when you're using it 
This one's a uh, half inch drive with a ratchet head on it. It's good. And I'm using an extension with a 19mm socket. So that'll give me plenty of reach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with number one and I'm going to click it up. You can hear the click? Okay. Move on to number two and do number two eventually. What you'll find as you're working through the sequence, the bolts will actually become a little bit looser, so you'll have to wind it a little bit more. But what it will be is 17 to 18, that's the last two. So I've gone through the whole sequence and these are the last two bolts. Once that's done, that is sequence number one done. We've torqued the head down evenly to 40 Newton meters. We've spread the load away across the faces of the head and the block. Sequence number two is turning all bolts in sequence to 60 degrees. I'll show you this angle gauge. If you've never used one before, it's quite simple to use. Putting a shallow socket on this you're not going to be able to do anything. You'll be able to do these bolts here quite easily but when you get to somewhere like this you won't be able to do them. All right, There's too much in the way. Instead of a deep socket I'm using an extension and a 3.8 drive. It doesn't make any difference you just want a bit of height on it. Using an extension with this won't work. All these tools are roughly the same. What you're doing is you're setting the peg somewhere so it's resting and winding it round. You see the peg here? All right, That's the thing that stops the body moving and then you have your dial on the top. Always wind it up to zero and not down to zero. Okay, now zoom in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm following the workshop manual sequence again. This is exactly the same. Setting my uh, dial gauge and then pulling it. Again, I'm pulling it towards me in an even motion. You shouldn't have a problem if it's in the vehicle. This gives you accuracy. So pulling this up should be able to go to 60 degrees, that's not to 60 in a very even movement. All right, 50 to 60, bang on. The difference between using a torque wrench and a dial gauge is a dial gauge is actually more accurate and it overcomes any anomalies in the materials. All right, this is the modern way of tightening bolts up. This is exactly 60, it's just the perspective of the camera that you're seeing here that it looks like it's not. Okay, so the third sequence is repeating, um, turning the bolts through 60 degrees. Alright, so this is sequence number three. Okay, well I only had the engine on its side, so you could see clearly what I was doing. Now, I'm going to pull it back up to give it a little bit more realism of what you'd experience in your vehicle possibly. And this thing's quite heavy, it's awkward to move, but I can get it upright. Pegs in, locked, it's not going to move anywhere. Right, brilliant engine stand, I love this. Sequence number three, again, we're looking at the manual, and we're going to have to work through the sequence. Take your time doing this. As you see, I'm having a cigarette break, and uh, I'm not doing this on video in a specific order, but on the engine, I am. You have to be comfortable when you do this, and again, pulling the bar, towards you is the most effective way of doing it. If you push it away you could either go too far or you could slip and hurt yourself. You want to get yourself as comfortable as possible so every time you set your gauge you might have to work from one side of the vehicle to the other and change the position of where you're standing. You get these angles right and it will be perfect. So for the third sequence I've nearly finished this now and um, it's looking good set the gauge, pull it around accurately, paying attention to what I'm doing. Alright, this is the key to success. 
Now, sequence 4 is uh, turning the bolts an extra 20 degrees, only a few of them, and this relates only to the 300 TDI engine. Again, there's no big deal here. In the manual it will tell you exactly which bolts to tighten up, okay? And they're generally in the centre to pull the head down a little bit more. Presumably it's to uh, stop head gasket failure. On the screen here is the number of the bolts and their positions. And they're to be tightened up in this sequence. As you can see, they are actually the centre bolts for the head. Once you've tightened them down to 20 degrees, you're all right. The head, cylinder head is tightened down correctly. There is no retorque sequence for this. This is it. Once it's done, it's ready to go. Okay, so that's the last bolts to do. Like I said, take your time. Set your gauge correctly so it doesn't move and you're in a comfortable position. 20 degrees is nothing on the last bolts. And to be honest with you, the heads the head bolts are not that tight anyway. You can see I'm reaching right over the engine and I do appreciate that working in a vehicle, I've done it a few times now, you have to maybe even stand on the box so you can reach in, okay? The idea is to play safe, play accurate and you'll have a good working engine that will not have a head gasket failure. <laughs> The last thing to do is to refit the rocket shaft, adjust the valve clearances and any other bits that you remove. Alright so that's it.